Okay. <clears throat> it's Hello. Seven Hello. Yes, it's seven o'clock. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this show on the road. Um, I'm Sam Jack, librarian at Newton Public Library. And I'm so happy to be here this evening with um, Fernando Salazar, longtime professional photographer and photojournalist in uh, Wichita. Uh, before um, I hand it over to Fernando, I just wanted to put in a few plugs for what we have coming up at the library next month in August. Our next fourth Tuesday meeting, um, which is Tuesday, August 24th at 7 p.m., will be with Travis Hying, is, I believe, Oh yeah, are you hearing issues? I hear someone say, "Are you hearing me okay, Fernando?" Let me see. I can hear you. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll check my microphone setting here. Let me, maybe I'll turn it up a little bit. Uh, uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, hello, hello. Okay, that's the green bar is going a little bit higher now on my mic, so we'll see if that um, fixes it some. But uh, yeah, so Travis Hying, I, I believe that's how it's pronounced, right? Right, Fernando. Hey. I think it says Haying. Haying, okay. I thought, okay, hey, Travis Haying, um, good to get that sorted out before the event, um, is going to talk about drone photography, which I'm really excited to hear about because it's a brand, I mean, it's pretty much brand new in the history of photography, right? These, these little robots that you can fly around and get really cool aerial photos. So um, uh, please, uh, with the, the, the event, Facebook event is up for that. And um, I'll, I, I'll be emailing out again how to register on Zoom for that as well. Um, a few other things we've got going on. Next month, we've got two events related to the orphan train movement, which was where orphans from the East Coast of the United States were put on trains and shipped off to Midwestern, often Midwestern, often rural farm families um, as a way of alleviating the, the social problem of, of children that, that, that weren't being cared for. So we, on the August the 18th, we're going to have the curator of the Orphan Train Museum for an online event. And then the next week on Thursday the 26th, we are having a book discussion as part of the Humanities Kansas talk series about the novel Orphan Train by Christian Baker Klein. So um, I could go on about what's happening, but um, just, I'll just say check our Facebook page, events tab, and our calendar on the website, and you can find out everything that's going on and coming up at the library. And um, with that, I guess we'll uh, start off with, um, with uh, oh, I, let me say a bit about, about uh, Fernando. Uh, you could say about, about more than a bit about yourself, we're hoping, Fernando. Um, I guess it's 30, around 30 years, 30 plus years as a Wichita Eagle photojournalist, um, yeah, now just, doing freelance and stuff, just, right? Just about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think we've all we've all seen his uh, his work in the paper, and now you've got a big following on Facebook. I see for your photos, and and um, just uh, can't wait to uh, to see what you're going to show us and uh, learn more about your uh, your career. So um, why don't you go ahead and pull up that? Um, uh, oh, you want to start sharing your screen and and uh, do I press share screen right here? Yeah, the sh hit the share screen button and then uh, and then desktop, right? Share, and do, do I need to get that uh, up on Photo Mechanic? Yeah, right? I, get that up on Photo Mechanic and then hit share screen is what I would. Okay, uh, and get it over here. Got the. Or actually, you can share screen for. I mean, <laughs> either way, in terms okay. of. Um. Yeah. Well, well. And I should say, um, while, while he's working on that, we do, this is um, interactive, so if you um, type your, your comments and questions in the, those of you in Zoom, you can type them in the chat or use the Q&A feature, and um, I'll, uh, I'll feed those into the conversation at the opportune times. Those of you on Facebook, same deal, I've, I'm watching that on my phone, so Oops. you can uh, type your Facebook comments and we'll, uh, we'll get it going that way. All right. I get it. Okay. Looks like he's getting them all highlighted. Uh, start. Okay. 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 And I can go forward like this. Okay. Um, I, Got yeah. It. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is your Zoom? Um, Maybe you need maybe you need to like minimize. I'm seeing a black screen, so maybe you need to minimize 
Zoom is in front of it again. Oh, now I see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, just uh, you can go ahead and just you know start start talking about about these photos and and uh, you well, know. first off, I I was uh, I studied at Long Beach State. I before that I was at Saddleback College in California, and I knew I wanted to be in the media arts. I just didn't know what. I started in sound recording, worked with the TV and film production uh, at, at the school there and wanted to do a storyboard. So I took a photo class to do a storyboard on a movie I wanted to make and started paying attention to the assignments that the students were getting because I was just there on a personal project to just do the storyboard. So I started listening to the assignments and paying attention to what the teacher was saying there. and. Um, at the same time, luckily I had a job where I picked up blood from veterinary hospitals and brought it back to a lab in Mission Viejo. So each day I would either go to San Diego, Los Angeles or Pasadena, and he had to be there by a certain time or else he would be caught in traffic forever. And uh, so each destination I got to, I would have two and a half hours to kill. And I would go out with my camera and I would start taking pictures. And one of the pictures, and I don't have it in my slideshow, here, but uh, I was in. I took a, uh, some kids in one of the dirty canals in Venice Beach, and it won second prize of all the community colleges, uh, which were a lot of schools. We're talking about hundreds of schools. So um, uh, I figured that's it. That that's uh, God telling me I need to go in that direction and. Uh, started working for my hometown paper there. And, and I, I transferred to Long Beach State where I took photojournalism. I was part of a great competitive class with uh, two photographers and ended up working for uh, George W. Bush at the White House. One was an AP photographer, been all over the world. A couple of my friends worked at the LA Times, uh, but I got the call from Wichita. And so I came here thinking I was gonna come here for about three or four years. And uh, 32 years later, I'm still here. Uh, the Eagle was a great ride. I went to some Final Fours in the beginning. I, uh, I got tagged with shooting a lot of sports pictures. So I just started doing that, even though I, my interests were about equal news and sports and fashion. And that, that was the beauty of working for a newspaper that you, you did it. You didn't know what you were going to do that day, but you knew it was going to be different. And uh, so anyway, that happened 30 years later. Uh, newspapers fell into a decline. They, had, uh, they started losing revenue. I got laid off and I really started, was worried about what I was going to do with my life. And I thought, well, photography is the only thing I know how to do. So uh, I, I kept at it. That, First year was kind of tough, but I got some assignments right away. Uh, the, the Wave, an amphitheater here in downtown Wichita, uh, started me off with a photo show. And then right after that, asked me if I could start shooting the concerts there. And that kind of became my first regular employer outside of the Eagle. And, and then things just snowballed from there and now I, uh, I, I'm shooting a lot for the YMCA, doing a lot of pictures of their trainers and uh, help, helping out on some of the videos they do for Y360. I shoot uh, uh, senior portraits, family portraits, just portraits. Uh, well, I'll shoot anything that anybody wants to give me. The, the uh, Interest Bank Arena, when they have some sporting events, they usually call. And, uh, and it, the work just seems to come from everywhere now. Plus, I'm getting into my own personal photography, which I think I didn't really do too much back when I was working for the paper because you're working all day and, you know, you get home and you don't really want to go out and shoot more pictures. But uh, with all the time I had on my hand after the layoff, I started just shooting things that interested me. And, uh, and actually, a lot of that stuff is what's liked on Facebook and, and has contributed to that large following I have. Cool. Well, um, 
Yeah, well, so th thanks for thanks for kind of uh, the, the capsule history there. Um, do you want to tell us something about the photo we're seeing here of these two horses? Oh, this is this is at Hutchison uh, Correctional Facility, and the inmates there had a chance to work with these wild mustangs that were brought in from uh, out west somewhere. I'm not sure, like New Mexico, I think, or Arizona, and they brought them to this uh, to the Hutchison uh, Correctional facility with, where some of the inmates would help break the horses. But this horse just arrived and I guess he was showing everybody who was boss. And I never knew this about horses, but you know, only that top horse gets to uh, mate with all the other horses. And the, the, other, the other male horses, they just gotta succumb to this guy's will. So there he is throwing a great right hook. <laughs> I'll, wow. uh, I'll keep going. And is that this, is that uh, this one that you did um, for the for the paper or this one I did for my college paper? I got tired of uh, of uh, doing stuff on campus so much. Long Beach State wasn't exactly the school that had a whole bunch of uh, school spirit. It was basically forty thousand commuters. They were in and out, and there were so it wasn't one of those schools. You know, even though they had uh, some great coaches. Uh, George Allen was their football coach and they couldn't get anybody to go to their games. Um, but I suggest that we started, I started venturing off campus and there was a, a veterans hospital across the street from the, from the school, very visible to anybody who went to that school. And so for veterans day, I, I, uh, I thought, I said, why don't we do something on this veterans hospital that everybody sees and this was the lead shot uh, of a package I did about the Veterans Hospital there in Long Beach. So just try, getting off campus. This is one of my earliest shots. This was from an NBC tournament. It was probably taken the second year I was at the Eagle, back when they had dirt instead of AstroTurf. And uh, it was actually shot on film. This is copied into a digital format. Um, but uh, I remember, I remember what, you know, I thought I had the shot, but you never knew until you developed the film when you got back to the paper. And uh, I was like, oh my God, the ball's right there in the middle. <laughs> I was like, and then I remember my editor telling me, because that's the best baseball shot I've ever seen. And I worked at a lot of papers. And actually, it's probably the best baseball picture I've ever taken. So I, uh, yeah, it's tough when you do do it right away, and then <laughs> another one, another one doesn't come along like that for a long time. So we got some more. This is a trip we went to Columbine. We we heard about Columbine, decided that we were going to go do some coverage. I I went up there with about three reporters. We drove all night. And we got there in the morning and we went to the school and this is one of the first things I saw. I don't remember the name of the students whose car this is, but uh, yeah, you could feel the pain. You could feel the pain everywhere in Denver that day. This was also my first year at the Wichita Eagle. I was lucky and I got sent out to the College World Series. And this is when they won the College World Series. That's Eric Wedge. Now he's the, uh, the coach of the Shockers. So it's nice to see him back. I wish I was out there shooting more games, but uh, you know, everything has its time. I shot this on a trip to Paraguay where I would go with my mom. My mom was really instrumental to me becoming a traveler. Every time I went to Bolivia to, to reach her, she would say, come on, Let's go. We're not spending time here. Let's uh, we got. Well, let's go to this country. Let's go here. So we stopped in uh, Asuncion, Paraguay, on our way to the the waterfalls at Iguazu, and I was in love with a photographer named Alex Webb and his color work. That he does a lot of work in Mexico and the Caribbean and Cuba and stuff like that because of the colors. And anyway, it seems like when you get to South America, you just you see so much color. And so I was trying to work with the colors, the shadows, sort of along what he was doing. This was one of my early uh, uh, 
fashion shots. Me and Bonnie Bing worked together for a good 28, 29 years doing fashion shoots for the Eagle every spring and fall. Good friend of mine. She, she kept me on my toes. She was, I always wanted to spend way more time on a picture than she did. She was like, I'm sure you got it by now. Come on, let's move on. And we would, uh, and she'd keep me moving. But it was fun working with them and it was fun shooting some fashion. This is just your typical day. This was at a senior center. They're, they're learning how to dance. And this is what photojournalism, or at least local photojournalism did for me. It was just, just an everyday shot, you know, people having fun. This kind of stuff, always, I always love this kind of stuff. I, you know, I love going to events and seeing people enjoying themselves. And I think it's helped me with some of the event photography I do now and some of the work I do for the concerts. You know, a lot of the times I go to the concert, I, I, sh I shoot half the shots are of the people in the audience. So I find that just as intriguing as the band on the stage. That's one of the, uh, one of my shots of the Wichita State Volleyball. It's probably, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. State basketball tournament. I just love the, the colors just jumped off the page on, for the, me on this one, so I included it. I was uh, inducted into the Kansas, the Wichita Sports Hall of Fame with Jeff Tuttle for our uh, work in photography. This is at interest. This is Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters, and he broke his leg, and he had that giant uh, thing that would bring him out, and he'd play in his, in his wheelchair there. It's pretty interesting. There's Greg Marshall. He had a temper back then, too. He had a temper back then. <laughs> but he was a hell of a coach. I'll give him that. <laughs> Fred Van Vliet. This guy is something else. Uh, I don't know what else to say. For, I, this ran in the cover of the, oh, I don't know. No, it wasn't this one. It was another picture similar to this one. Ran in the, in the New York Times. So that, I was really happy about that to be published by the New York Times. I just love that moment of this Southeast coach. Uh, you can tell his players really loved him and he loved his players where you can tell from this photo. And this is a, I think, I like probably a semifinal loss in the state tournament. This is a vigil for this lady here in the pink who, who, uh, whose child went missing. And so they were having a, a vigil. I, I think they found the child was, you know, they found the child not alive. And, but the community came out to support her. And I always like that about the, the black community here that when something tragic like that happened, really the whole community came out to support the person who was suffering. I don't know if you remember the bat boy that was killed by a flying bat in an NBC tournament about three or four years ago. That's the little boy. Uh, this is in liberal. And uh, uh, they put a statue up of him at the at the school where they where they played, and uh, or at the field where they played, and those are his parents. And we we went down there to do a video of uh, the parents. It was a year later after after the little boy was killed, and uh, yeah, that was a heartbreaking story. This is just a typical Friday night Goddard uh, football, which is like a small college now. <laughs> or something. Between Derby and Goddard, it seems like you're going to a small college instead of a high school these days. Uh, but I just like that shot. <laughs> also, state basketball, the, the, joy of, the joy of winning, of victory. How do they say it in sports, uh, wide world of sports? And then right there, the agony of defeat. <laughs> Here's some of my uh, first 
starts after I left the paper to just shooting stuff that I like to see. This was just a reflection of a Cargill building that had this uh, metal uh, kind of awning. And it's just reflecting some of the colors that were across the street. Uh, I actually sold that piece. I, I actually sold this piece too. I went to uh, do a story on uh, Petrobase uh, Oil Company, which is a software company, but they have this beautiful home out there in uh, Andover. And she said, why don't you just go out there in my, in my backyard and take some pictures and see what you see? Well, this was the ref reflection of the autumn trees on a, on, a, on a pond that had ripples through it. And I also, I also sold a five foot metal uh, print of that, which turned out really nice. It's in the lobby of the Garvey building. Uh, this was one of the first assignments I got after uh, I got laid off. This was uh, the Wichita State uh, Magazine. I'm, I'm blanking out on the name, but uh, they were only uh, alive for another month. Uh, this was the last issue actually. So this ran in the last issue and yeah, it was just sad for me because I was watching just newspapers and magazines just uh, dying. It was, it was really hard for me. This is also from that dance uh, recital. It was a bunch of colleges. Another one from there. But I love that I got to do color and dance because I love movement. I love action and and to combine that with the with the, the great light and these you know really i guess i i i think of them as athletes i think that these dancers are just you know amazing so uh this is a girl from heights high school after she hit the game winning shot i believe to win a 6a tournament championship so there's their coach in the middle hugging her kip pulliam he's a great coach uh so I just like love being able to capture these kind of moments, you know. Here's another uh, picture that is me starting to get away from photojournalism and just start shooting things that are interesting to me. These are uh, uh, the flowers that have fallen from a magnolia tree, and they were they were just kind of littering up the ground. I just brought a macro lens, so I am so. You can see that these are the right in the middle is in focus, but behind them is out of focus, and it's probably only an inch or two behind them, like not even an inch, half an inch. So, yeah, it was a learning curve to learn how to use that macro lens. But I, I, you know, I wanted to get into some of this uh, more close-up color work. This is uh, a picture at Wave. This is Annie DeFranco. Um, and I just started shooting a whole bunch of pictures that wave and I fell in love with, uh, well, I, I, they have great lighting there. So I love their lighting technicians and, uh, I love seeing these concerts. <laughs> this is me. This is down. I was just, uh, this is in downtown Wichita, a couple of blue cars that are reflected of a, a, a building that's the sun is hitting. So we have some orange reflection going on with these blue cars. I just thought it was a cool picture. I don't know if you guys know the photographer Ernst Haas. He's one of the great color photographers. I would say him and, Sam, uh, and Saul Leiter, but Ernst Haas is my favorite. I just think he's a genius. And I think this is kind of the stuff Kind of what I've learned kind of from Ernst Haas, looking for color, just for color's sake. This is uh, that first year I was shooting for the wave on a, on a beautiful summer night. The band is Lanco, it's close to sell out. And I just like the energy. He went out into the crowd and everybody, I think he got picked up a little bit. I don't know how he's, he's so much higher than everybody else. I think I just raised the camera over my head and and, and got this shot. I did, I've done a lot of that 
holding my camera over my head to get shots, especially in sporting events. And I'm only five, six, so I do a lot of that. <laughs> There's the Wu-Tang Clan, also at the wave. Just really like the lighting on this one. The, and the, and the, the mood, the hip, and hop, the hip hop kind of feel of it. This I took, we were at Botanica and I was helping a friend shoot some of his lights that he has. He has these, uh, I don't know, like these illumination lights like you would see at Friends University or something or in front of a house during Christmas time. We were killing time and there was a koi pond and these fish were swimming on the water and it gave it kind of a painterly look. You could see right in the middle is the, the only really sharp part where the fish came out of the water. The rest of it, uh, it looks, it looks like it looks like a sort of like a watercolor. Uh, actually, this printed up pretty nice, uh, almost nicer than it looks on the screen. This is also at the Wave. They had a Mexican uh, band or five bands or something. But I love this photo. Uh, to me, it's very photojournalism. And that's what I, I like, that's what I mean when I like shooting out there, the audience as much as I do the bands on stage is because you get to see uh, these cultures, you know, right here's the Mexican culture, but um, you know, I'm just as fascinated by cowboy cultures and by hip hop culture and rock and roll culture. And so this was really interesting for me to, to have this and I'm glad the wave you know diversifies its its uh music like this and they have all sorts of different people coming there to their concerts it's not always it's not always the same crowd this was a uh, shot for a church during a fundraiser and she was in a choir and then later she wanted to sing some more and it just I just love this picture because it just screams find your voice and so i think i printed it later uh without the or i posted it later with, with just those words find your voice this is my girlfriend's daughter i i just i i decided i needed to buy some lights and get in be able to take a decent portrait and i was working with some speed lights and stuff but i i uh I finally went out and bought some, some real lights. And so uh, she was my test model. She got kind of, I think it's kind of a cool picture. She looks like a, a young Joan Jett. This is from the Regina Klenjowski Dance Company. Uh, they had a thing at the Crown Uptown called Duets. I think this guy's name is Max. I got a I gotta make sure, but he's in the company and he's a phenomenal dancer. And uh, it was just one of my favorite shots of the night. This was also from that same night, from that same uh, performance. For you photographers, they just have like these two huge uh, uh, lights on the side of the stage providing that cross light. This was taken during COVID times and uh, I didn't know what to do. I know we weren't supposed to be around anybody. And I was talking with a friend and my girlfriend's a gardener and my friend was helping her and he's a, he's a really good gardener. And we just started talking about flowers and he, started telling me about all the best places to see flowers, which Wichita State was one of them. So I went down to Wichita State and this is from a tulip. This is with the, with the 100 macro again. So these are the stems and already the flower in the background is out of focus. But it just gets it's kind of a neat, kind of a neat psychedelic shot, I think. This was also part of that series I did on the flowers there at Wichita State. 
I had to do something. I was going crazy and I needed to go shoot and I couldn't be around people. So I, I never thought I'd be a flower shooter, but you know. This is in downtown Wichita. I shot this because it reminds me of an Edward Hopper painting. And uh, man, we get great clouds in here in Kansas, don't we? And uh, that's all I got to say about that. I love Edward Hopper. And uh, I think I was inspired that day by him. These are some, this is one of my uh, senior photos. This was actually my neighbor's uh, great granddaughter. My neighbor died, he was a World War II veteran. And uh, he died and his, his grandson moved in and his other grandson needed some senior photos. And I, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was an honor for me to be able to shoot this because I, that neighbor I had for 28, 29 years, he was really something else. And uh, I was just really happy to do this for him. Let me see, how come it's not? Okay, are you seeing that later screen? <laughs> trying to get rid of that thing in the corner. Yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, man, I can never remember the name of the sculpture because it's a long word and it's not, doesn't make sense to me, but it is in the garden sculpture of the art museum right next to my house. This was just me going out for a walk and the sun was hitting this thing just right with the clouds and a little bit of pink clouds behind it. And uh, this is what this is feels like this is the direction where I, I want to take my photography. So sort of a. It's cool. I love that you can there's like a 3D and a 2D geometry that you can see in that, you know, with the, with the way it cuts out the, the, the background. Mm -hmm. Really cool. My neighbor has this blown up in her living room. I really like the way it looks there. One of these days I might blow it up for myself. <laughs> Here's my friend wanted a family portrait, but he didn't want the normal family portrait. And he's a rock and roller. He owns, uh, his name is Angelo Rodriguez and he owns uh, our coffee shop here in Riverside. He's also a rapper, a music producer, uh, and a, a, a chef, just a all around cool guy. And I thought we, we did it right. And his daughter's an upcoming uh, singer. She's got a CD out. And I just thought this was uh, the right setting for this kind of a family. This is down, by the way, this is behind Commerce Street down here. Commerce Street is a uh, street that has a first and final Fridays with about maybe five galleries on it. A great place to see art. This is me just, I was just leaving my place in the morning uh, where the condos where I live and there was a neighbor moving in. And so that's his, the, the moving van reflected off my neighbor's red car. And I just, I don't know, this is the kind of stuff that I like. You know, the, the color photography, uh, I'll be heading to New York in September. So I'll be doing a lot of this, looking for this kind of images. Uh, my friend Angelo's, well, his brother Gerard has a son, uh, Jax. And uh, he said, my son has such intense blue eyes. I want you to take a picture that, sh that shows that. So uh, we just, Put him, you know, I said, have him wear a black shirt. We'll put him in, in a black background and, and we'll see if those eyes jump out. And I think I, he achieved it on this shot, huh? Because, man, those eyes are blue. Yeah, that almost looks like an old master style painting portrait, you know, it's, it's cool. Yeah, there's a, I haven't gotten there yet, I don't think, but there's a guy, like, there's a guy named Christopher Knight who does this, he does a series called the, the Dramatic Portrait. And 
man, the stuff that he comes up with, they all look like paintings. They all look like the old master paintings. It's really amazing. This is just here in my backyard. Not, um, not really, not my backyard, but uh, I live right on the little Arkansas River. So this is just down the, the street from me, right on the river. And I was just loving the foliage when this uh, kayaker came by to make the picture even better. And this was a sunset. I haven't seen too many of these kind of sunsets, but I was out there and I can see this in the sky. I mean, I know how to bring it out on the computer. Usually the first thing I do is bring down the highlights all the way to just bring out the, the colors uh, that sometimes aren't there because the, it's blown out. And then, and then, I, then I open up the shadows then I adjust the contrast and you know everything else, the vibrance, the clarity, the um, you know, I even I even use white and black levers to push contrast sometimes. I'll push them away, you know, aside from each other. But I knew I was like, look at all the colors in the sky. And I'm like, I know I can get them. And sure enough, they came out. I, I haven't seen a sunset like that with that many different colors. That was also taken on the same day. That was also taken on the same day. This is uh, this is one of my early black and white. This is a copy of a print. I had an old print that it's on my desk, but uh, I'm happy with this one. This was about uh, crack babies. This is a grandmother that was taking care of his, his grand of her granddaughter because her mom, her daughter was couldn't function, you know, because she was a crack addict. This baby was hooked up to this monitor at the bottom of the picture because uh, its heart would stop and the, the monitor would detect it. And, and I don't know what the grandmother would do to get the baby's heart to start beating again. A kind of, uh, yeah, it was a sad story, but I think I, I got some compliments from my fellow photographers at the paper and that really made me feel good. So I have a... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Because I was just, they were just like, oh, we thought we just hired you because we needed a minority, but you're actually pretty good. So I was like, oh, thanks, guys. I was like, thanks, guys. Man, <laughs> I'm just curious about um, with when you would when you would go out on an assignment like this. I guess back back then, um, would you would it be you and a reporter going together? Yeah, uh, a lot of times. Uh, or, or a lot of times I would just set it up and go myself because, uh, or, or sometimes I would hear something, you know, sometimes I go with a reporter and they would talk a lot and then something would come up and I say, oh, so you do this. Can I get pictures of you doing that? You know, instead of just talking to a reporter, you know, like, you, and so, so I would go back sometimes and, and to get the picture it was back, back when we had like 12 photographers. So we had time. Actually, I, would, I, I, I worked on a project once for three, four months before I finished it. Uh, it was on mental illness. It, it was uh, three double trucks. And uh, yeah, it was just a, it was a good time to be at the paper because uh, if you wanted to work on a project, you could. And uh, so I don't remember if the reporter was with me right then at this time. Uh, a lot of times I go with the reporter, but a lot of times I go back by myself or mm -hmm. a lot of times the reporter would just go here, go take a picture of this person. I'm not gonna be there. I already talked to him on the phone. So I, you know, I would, I would just get there. And right. I, sometimes it works out good because uh, they ask a lot of questions. And so you learn a lot about the person and, and I, I, like to ask questions, but a lot of times I just want to be a fly on the wall and, and have them not even notice that I'm there. So it's kind of a hard balance, you know, like to when to be quiet, when to ask, the, when to ask a question and, and when to just let things be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like this makes, sorry. You know, oh, that, yeah, that, that one there makes me wonder like, um, 
you know, when, when you were taking this, I mean, were you just kind of s sitting quietly and just, just tell her to be with, be with her baby or, or were you kind of talking with her about the issue of, of drug yeah, addiction? I think I was talking with her a little bit. I think the baby started crying and then she went over, picked up the baby and bam, I snapped the picture. Oh, yeah, because I guess that's, that's the, uh, um, you know, I, I, not on your level at all, but, but back before I started working at the library, I, I was a reporter slash photographer for Time Sentinel newspapers. And um, when I, you know, a lot of it was like that photo you showed earlier that was just people having fun, smiling, dancing together. But then, you know, when you, when you do get to the more serious stories, I always kind of struggled with, um, you know, when do you turn it from the conversation to like, like, okay, now, now let's get the, I mean, it's just, if, you know, like somebody is, is dealing with something really serious and that's, what, or, or, or tragic, and that's why you're there. How do you, how do you get the photo without feeling like you're being, you know, I don't know, insensitive or exploitative or something like that? You know what I mean? I think in the end, you have to tell yourself the picture is worth it. The picture is important. This, this story needs to be told. And, uh, and I think for the most part, uh, these people know that, uh, that you're taking these, the, those kind of pictures of, they, they, they realize that sometimes they'll get mad and it happens. And I'm not saying it hasn't happened to me, you know, some just get that camera out of my face. Uh, but, uh, in the end, I feel like this is something that needs to be a story that needs to be told. And then, so that, that's what, that's what propels me to shoot it. Yeah, I know. And, and, and early in my career, I had problems and it was hard too, you know, and because, uh, yeah, sometimes you feel like a vulture, but um, it's got to be told, right? Right. Yeah. And I, and that's what I had to tell myself sometimes is that like, you know, if, if these people, you know, they wouldn't have invited me to their home or to, or to wherever this is happening and unless, unless they wanted the story to be told and this so yeah but and before i think i used to beat around the bush a little you know make try to make small talk usually when i go into situations like that right now it's like i just want to talk let's get to the let's just get to the nut of the the, the problem here like talk to me about your uh, your daughter who's got this crack problem you know what's you know like right off the bat you know i used to i used to try to small talk but i i, I kind of learned small you don't need to do that you just you just talk to them directly you know why you're there they know why you're there <laughs> so here's one of my shots also taken on that same day of that other sunset looking the other way and so and i, I just love the colors that day Uh, this is right by my house. One of those kayakers with the with the birds flying along with her. Looks like they almost look like they were racing. This is also in front of my house, taken from my balcony on the, uh, at sunrise. And this is the the reflection coming off the river. And I put a four hundred, no, a three hundred and a and a teleconverter. So that's a 420 millimeter shot from my balcony looking straight down at the river. I uh, just like that shot a lot. Here's another uh, case of the, a woman and a missing child and the community coming out to support them. I just, every time I, I just thought of other pictures. <laughs> I keep thinking, of, why didn't I include that one? I took a picture of a, I don't have it in here, but there was a, there was a, there was a car accident in front of a school where a van killed some, killed a couple of, killed a kid or two, maybe. But anyway, when the kids were let out of school at three, his brother showed up to walk his little brother home. The big brother's probably about 17. The little brother's probably about eight or nine. And he's covering the boy's eyes as they're walking by the accident scene, so he doesn't see it. And uh, I just thought that was so cool. And but I, 
I'll find that picture sooner or later. <laughs> I'll find that picture. I started, these are my, my attempts at doing portraits uh, now. This is, uh, this is actually my friend's son. And he wanted a portrait of himself done. And uh, yeah, I just like the, I really like the way it turned out. That's just natural light coming in through a window. Here's a sunset here, down here on, on Douglas. And that was a killer sunset that night, boy. All those colors. This is at Oak Park after that big snow last winter. It's really two different styles, right? One is my photojournalism and then the other is, uh, see like stuff like this, I would never shoot for the paper. But now I stop and I take these pictures. That's an industrial park on, on, a, on a snowy day. That is Sim Park, also on those, that cold snap we have where everybody's gas and electricity bill went off through the charts. But that's at Sim Park. I like this one. I was just kind of out there kind of shooting when this guy walks up to the stop sign, doesn't know which way to go, looks left, looks right, and then just goes left. But it just gives me a feeling of sometimes you feel like so, such a small part of the machine. And uh, that's what this picture gives me the feeling of. So reflections is downtown. This is the Innis Station Apartments. And I was just driving by. I think you can tell I like reflections now. And uh, another reflection shot. Started doing headshots. So this is one of my early attempts at doing some headshots. This is just one late night. I was watching TV and I happened to be, the door was open, my balcony door was open and there was like a double reflection going on and, and I shot this and I, I just really liked it. Like the, uh, that's set up, but uh, the Bartlett Arboretum. We went there on the, when they opened up, I think they had a tulip festival with music and food and art. And this is here in Riverside in the springtime. This is the old uh, uh, Pippin house, which has a big kind of forest in their front yard. And these beautiful red, red bud trees. Take this one in Bolivia, early, early on. And this is actually a macro shot of a slide that's taped to of my window. So I can't wait to get this thing uh, printed because this is all sharp. Obviously it's not sharp in this picture and just his noses, but uh, yeah, this is all sharp. And I don't know why I like this picture so much, but uh, it reminds me of the Bolivian William Burroughs. So I'm gonna, can't wait to get that one blown up. And I actually, I've never blown up a Kodachrome slide, so I'm dying to see what it looks like. This was also on Kodachrome early, early. This is back when I was in junior college. Uh, and this is uh, two little boys at Christmas time, looking at a toy, the toy store's toys, knowing that they will probably never have those toys, you know, because they're a couple of poor kids. And, uh, but I just kind of gives, gives me a Norman Rockwell kind of feeling to the, to the photo. Here's some of my abstract work. Uh, this is my girlfriend's mom's garden and one of her irises. 
I just did this lately for a, a quinceanera. They were looking some, for some photos. They were actually going to Mexico, but they wanted to have a, a really nice picture uh, there at the quinceanera of her. And we shot that, I like that one. And then there was this one in black and white too that I kind of, I liked. So. And since I was doing a lot of black and white, uh, this is my friend's son. He was the point guard of Trinity High School. I, he's gonna go play for a small college now. And that's at the football field at his, uh, at his work, at his school. This is Rudy Love Jr. And a concert at the, at the Brickyard and I went to take a few pictures. I had a, a couple of friends in the band and I just loved the, the way he ended the concert with raising his fist like that. And the Brickyard actually asked me to use this as a promotion for there because he plays there every first Friday, I believe. And so now it's the promotion for his show every first Friday. This is a wedding, so I've started to shoot some weddings. And uh, this was back in May. And this was actually the bride's idea. She loved the grass. She was like, oh, that great, there's that great grass. I'm going, let's do it. And uh, this is a soft box, 600 soft box. This is probably about six in the evening, I'm saying. Underexposed the background a little bit light hit them in the grass real nice i was i was happy with it this is also a wedding i shot in june just the uh, last month and they wanted to get married on this hill uh with uh with the foot with the i guess this is his land i i don't i'm assuming this is not all his land all the way going back but right 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 behind him right directly behind him is his land he had a bunch of cattle and stuff and we did get blessed with a beautiful sunset so we got lucky this is just a picture of my condo <laughs> this is me going out to my car I, where i usually park uh this bottom left corner is the parking garage and i saw that the light was just bouncing on, the, on top of the parking garage, it's metal. So the light is just bouncing under that one eave of the building there. And, and I knew if I underexposed by two stops, everything would go black here and I would get this vibrant, vibrant blue against the white. And I just had to shoot it. This is one of the portraits I've done for one of the trainers at the Y. Uh, just uh, lit with a soft box from the left, a hair light behind her on the right, another light with a red gel going across the floor just to give it color. And um, so I've been doing those portraits. I've, I've been working for the YMCA very steadily since November. They really saved me uh, this last half a year and have employed me steadily, maybe sometimes two, sometimes three days a week. Uh, shoot, help shooting these videos and these portraits and and uh, doing the stills. So I'm really happy to work with them. This is just somebody I met at the, uh, we called it uh, Wichita, Wichita City Pride or Wichita Pride. I forgot what it was, which are, Wichita Pride or something, or uh, but it was like a gay pride festival. It was at Nascar Park about three weeks ago, four weeks ago now. And I shot this for the city. Uh, that was actually my favorite lead shot of the night. I just love the portrait of the girl, just, just as a far as a portrait. But I think this was one of the storytelling shots of the night. I still kind of approach this things like a journalist. So uh, here's, I shot this for the Wichita Business Journal. They had a 40 under 40 uh, thing where uh, 
the you know the top 40 uh, business people here in town that are under 40. But they usually pick this beautiful home uh, that's in the parade of homes, uh, like a, a show house. And so we got to use the house. And even this picture behind her is a very famous picture of the Beatles in the swimming pool. Uh, but I just used it as the frame, just to frame her up. Uh, you don't see the Beatles there, but uh, I just like that the whole, everything just kind of came together for this portrait, I thought. Another portrait of the uh, YMCA uh, trainers that I did for them. At the Wave, uh, Parker McCollum, I believe was the artist, country artist, came out about three weeks ago and uh, took a selfie of himself, asked the crowd to light up their cell phones. I turned around and I saw this and uh, shot it. Like that one, like, like the energy. This I did for the Beacon, a new news organization that uh, started up in Kansas City by one of our former reporters at the Eagle, Kelsey Ryan. And uh, she started this and they just launched their Wichita uh, office with three reporters who are gonna be doing uh, in-depth journalism. You know, obviously they can't cover everything with just three reporters, but they hope to cover issues like racism and uh, you know, they want to be the watchdog, uh, watchdog journalism force in this town. And this is a guy who uh, he's a poet. He does slam poetry. Somehow he ended up on the on the police gang list. So every time the police get behind him and run his plates, uh, he ends up getting pulled over because he's on this list. He doesn't know how he got on the list. He doesn't know how to get off the list. And uh, he tells me he has no gang affiliations. This, I shot this right after I shot that other picture. I shot that other picture. I listened to his uh, slam poetry. I was walking by the Eaton there. And when the light went red, it lit up the, the side of the building. Uh, it was totally different when the light went green. It didn't look like that. It looked, it had a green tint. But I just just really love the way the, the colors turned out. Feels like I'm shooting color for color's sake these days. You know, I just, I just, I just like color, you know. This is walking by the uh, uh, exploration place, another reflection shot. Uh, I shot this with on a small point and shoot. I might go back with a real camera with more megapixels, maybe a tripod. I was just walking down the river and I saw this at, uh, at Exploration Place. This I shot last week. This is also that the feeling that's Edward Hopper feeling I get of so many buildings I see around town here. And uh, so I just, shot that there was when I shot this originally you know the angle of which I shot it was there was some they were kind of skewed but now Photoshop has you know uh, perspective uh, correction uh, so you can you can tap on that and it'll straighten the building and uh, to make it look like like it's supposed to look like it's <laughs> and this one I shot last night coming home from the store. There was a nice sunset over the, the little Arkansas River near my house. And I saw it first and I was like, I shot it first with my iPhone. Then I said, I'm gonna run home and get a camera. I went home and get the camera. The sunset even got a better, even though it was later, almost close to nighttime. But um, yep, so that was last night's photo. Nice. That's all I got for you. That's all I got. Great, great. Let me uh, turn off your. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. I really enjoyed that, and I'm sure everybody else did too. So, um, everybody, um, we have some time for uh, some uh, questions. If you have questions for Fernando, you can uh, type them in the chat or the Q and A um, if you're on Zoom, 
or in the chat comments if you're on Facebook. Um, so go ahead and go ahead and do that if you'd like to. Um, I had a question to, to kick things off. You know, I, I see all these photos at Wave and at, at big events. So, I mean, what would your advice be for, you know, the photographers here? Um, how, how do you approach a big, you know, you're, you're at a big crowded event and you're trying to, you're trying to kind of document it and get some great photos out of it. Do you, you know, how do you, how do you, where do you position yourself? How do you circulate around to try and figure out what the, what the good photos are going to be? I think you got to tap into the energy of the room or the energy of the concert or the energy of the event. You can kind of feel it. I mean, I, I think it comes from shooting a lot of sports, you know, and waiting for that last, you know, waiting for that person making the last shot or missing the last shot or whatever, you know, trying to find that, that one moment. I'm always trying to find that one moment that, you know, tells a story of the whole night. But, you know, that's usually hard and I could hardly ever do it at the paper. I always felt like I needed a secondary photo or, or a third photo to actually round out what you were trying to say. But, uh, but I would, that's, you follow the energy, you know, you, you look for the energy, you, you find, you pinpoint where the energy is and you go towards it. Yeah. Um, Barbara has kind of a practical question. Um, do you need to get people to sign releases when you take their photos? Uh, if you work for a newspaper, you don't have to have releases. For the most part on the street, uh, you don't need releases. Uh, you need releases if you're going to use it for advertising, which a book cover is considered advertising. So if they're going to be on a book cover, you probably would need a release. But other than that, uh, street photography, you don't need releases. Yeah, yeah, there's a, and I kind of, you know, now I, I take some, I take some photos um, at the, at the library. Like I was, I was taking some photos of story time this morning and it's kind of like, um, you know, you know, they, you feel like even, even if you, you don't technically need a release, you, you, you definitely want people to be happy that you're taking their photo in a situation like that. So I guess that kind of uh, varies the, the question there. The way that we worked at, at the Eagle, I always went up to them and asked them their names after I took their picture. If they didn't give us their names, the paper would, wouldn't run the picture. Like if I couldn't get the person's name, the paper wouldn't run the, the, the picture. And so that's how we got around. That's that's kind of how they did it, and and I, I thought that was a good rule because if they if they didn't want to give me their name, that means they didn't want to be in the paper, and right. uh, so so and that happened a few times. It doesn't happen too often. Yeah, and um, I see someone's got put clicked on the hand raised. Um, if you want me to turn on your mic, uh, you could just type that in the chat, or else type your question in the chat. Um, and let me see here. Um, oh, I this is maybe a little bit off the photography topic, but you know, you you mentioned you've lived in Riverside, in the heart of that neighborhood, ever since you moved to Wichita. Um, and that just you know, I've never lived there, but it just seems what what have you, what kind of a impressions have you formed of Riverside over living there for so long? Just the community there, and it seemed like there's so many artists there and neat. Oh, I, yeah, I I love living here. Yeah, and I've made a lot of friends in this neighborhood and I'm making more friends as I post pictures of Riverside and I share them to the Riverside pages. And so, uh, yeah, I'll be, it's funny, I'll be out there taking pictures and a car will drive by and I'll hear, Fernando, I don't, and I don't even know who it is, but, you know, it's nice. It's, it's nice. I, I, I really enjoy being part of this community here. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, great. Well, um, I think uh, that I, I really enjoyed it and I, I, uh, I'm sure everybody else did as well. So thank you again for being with us and showing us all these awesome photos and talking about your life as a photographer. Um, I'm glad. I hope I could inspire somebody or, or uh, to do some photography or whatever. Whatever I could do to help anybody in, in the photography. I love photography. I know uh, probably everybody in your audience does too. And it's uh, it's been a it's been a good life. <laughs>
it's been a, a, a good way to see life, a good way to feel part of it. And uh, like my, my, my friend Jerry Clark at the paper used to say, it's the, it was the best job in the world. And it's still, it still feels like the best job in the world. <laughs> yeah. well, we did have one more question just come in. Uh, Barbara asked, have you, have you ever considered running, uh, running classes? For teaching uh right now i'm working so much that i am not uh in a position to uh, run classes i thought about it actually i actually thought about uh maybe trying to teach at north high but um uh, but the the work started coming and now it, it just seems like i'm working like 50 60 hours a week so well that's great i mean that's a lot to be working but i'm, I'm glad that you're talents being recognized and you're getting all those awesome assignments so just to uh, keep it up and uh thanks for taking some time out to to talk with our club hey and uh, thank you so much and next week you're gonna love travis hayne one of my favorite curves uh really great great photographer there so uh you're gonna enjoy that too yeah yeah next next month one yeah. tuesday of august so yes thanks for putting in another plug for that and uh all right, we'll go ahead and sign off now. Bye, everybody. All right, bye-bye.